the government has delivered and how. Uh, it's gone the full distance uh, to ensure that uh, there is no excuse for yields not to fall and for the Reserve Bank and the uh, uh, commercial banks not to respond. Uh, the extent of uh, cuts are between uh, 60 and 80 basis points and that's a significant cut uh, especially in the one year deposits the time deposits of the post offices as you can see it's a 130 basis point cut so competition from these small savings products to the banking sector has practically been removed most bankers will tell you off camera off the record that that's really not a very big competition but nevertheless uh, even for the record this uh, uh, competition has been removed so the expectation is that you will have to deliver in terms of uh, uh, deposit rate cuts and therefore lending rate cuts the bigger signal is to the reserve bank we have not only delivered on fiscal discipline we have also delivered on the only competition that uh, 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 commercial banks have by bringing down these rates. So, as it is, you have the lower fist, you have the lower than expected uh, 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 inflation number coming in for February. This is a third big reason for uh, the government to expect that the Reserve Bank will not just cut, but cut liberally. Okay, let's get some conversations going on that as well. We've got Aditi Nair of Ikra joining in. Aditi, if you can hear me, thanks for joining in. So big cuts have come through. We're talking about cuts ranging between 60 to 100 basis points in some cases. Is it going to meet the purpose? Will it actually help bank lower the, their uh, uh, lending rates? You know, I think one thing that we need to uh, keep in mind is that these cuts have come on the back of practically no cuts uh, in uh, March of 2015. So when we're looking at the comparison, we actually need to look at the entire gamut of 125 basis points of uh, cuts in the repo rate that we've had since 2015, against which now we have the 60 to 100 basis points uh, cut in different schemes. So, you know, we we shouldn't be comparing it only to the rate cuts that happened in 2015-16, but also the 50 bits that happened in the first quarter of 2015 calendar year. Uh, anyways, it's uh, definitely a welcome move and I think uh, not only this uh, one-time reset but the fact that uh, the government is going to relook at the rates every quarter. I think that is something that is extremely uh, significant because what we're going to have now is transmission happening at a much, much faster pace as compared to what has happened in the past where at max we've seen once a year uh, the rate being reset. So I think that uh, is a very significant uh, movement in terms of... Uh, uh, benefiting the transmission process and you know as uh, uh, coming to the point yeah. of uh, uh, deposits uh, and uh, competition from small savings schemes i think it's a very different picture in different geographies so what we find is that in some states uh, which perhaps may be the one where uh, uh, the banking penetration is uh, not as good that uh, small savings tend to attract a very large uh, but aditi uh, do you think you should expect uh, uh you know, more of a rate cut from RBI and more importantly, do you think this time around the banks will have to pass it on? See, I think uh, as far as uh, the RBI is concerned, we are expecting 125 basis points cut in the April policy. And after that, I think there will be a number of factors that the RBI would have to gauge. One, of course, the monsoon. I mean, you know, we'll get the first IMD official report at the end of April, which is going to be after this policy. And then, of course, uh, when does the pay commission get implemented and what kind of an impact does it have across the board on inflation? Uh, that is something to be watchful for. I mean, I'm not saying that it's going to have a huge impact, but it's definitely something uh, that we need to be cautious about. So after assessing two of these big risks, I think uh, the RBI will uh, choose whether to move further. But a 25 basis points uh, cut in the April policy okay. uh, seems quite a very, very high likelihood. Okay, point. well, 25 is not what I guess will satisfy the government, which has delivered on fiscal prudence and delivered on small savings. Surely this will mean a huge public backlash uh, on, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, from the newspapers and the media. So they're braving a lot to ensure that uh, rates go down in the system. 25 basis perhaps will not met their appetite at all. Uh, Feroz Aziz of Anandrati is also with us. Feroz, uh, 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 is our small savings very big competition for banks with this will more money go into bank deposits i think uh, lata like you rightly pointed out uh, uh, there will be uh, yeah so so uh, definitely bank deposits will not attract as much money uh, with these kind of uh, rates uh, being passed on uh, and i think guys uh, like uh, uh, in terms of rate cuts, uh, of course, there's going to be several 
several no, uh, other with, indicators. No, with Ferro's with one year post office going down to seven percent, and uh, PPF and others also falling by half a percent. Would you think that bank deposits will attract money, and therefore will bankers be emboldened yeah. to cut? So I think I think uh, of course bank deposits will attract more money. Uh, that's uh, that's definitely going to be uh, the case in terms of uh, flows. All right, Feroz. Uh, thanks for that quick take. Aditi, uh, just getting back to the point of transmission of rates, because that's the genesis of this entire debate, perhaps a couple of months back, uh, that you know bankers are not passing on much of the uh, monetary policy transmission. Uh, do you see transmission getting better now that the government has moved on its promise? Yes, uh, you know, not only what's happened today with the small saving rates, but also with the transition to the MCLR linked uh, regime, I think we are uh, looking forward to uh, improve transmission after 1st of April. So I think both of these are going to go hand in hand to make sure that at least as compared to the past rate cuts, uh, the transmission improves. And then, of course, if we get, uh, uh, you know, more rate cuts coming from the RBI, then uh, the transmission of those should also be faster than what they have been in the past. Okay. Well, uh, Aditi, just one last point. Uh, the uh, borrowing calendar also says that a cash management committee is going to be set up, which will look at the government finances. You think that will smooth out, uh, you know, this extreme lack of liquidity and therefore keep the bond markets uh, kind of at an even keel? How would you look at that committee appointment? We don't have too much details. I think that's uh, definitely a positive move. I mean, particularly what we see in uh, the second, third and fourth quarters after the advanced tax uh, payments start flowing out. And of course, what we see every year in H2, uh, certainly uh, uh, balancing out the cash needs. I mean, I think this is a, a welcome point and I do hope that it's going to help to even out uh, systemic liquidity in the future. It's not only, of course, uh, the central government which tends to... Um, you know, front load is borrowing program, but what we do find in most years is that the state governments actually back end uh, their uh, borrowing program. So that kind of offsets uh, what uh, uh, the central government does. And uh, in years where uh, the borrowing from the state governments is higher than what is expected, I think that is again something that can add to liquidity okay. tightness in the second half. Okay, all right, Aditi. Thanks so much for giving us your view on that story.